Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, Improving the Welding Capability and Efficiency of Your Large Area Fabrication Process, sponsored by OTC Dihan and Arc Solutions, Inc. We'll begin in a few minutes to give everybody some time to log in. Okay, it looks like we have everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Improving the Welding Capability and Efficiency of Your Large Area Fabrication Process, sponsored by OTC Dihan and Arc Solutions, Inc. Before I introduce our speaker, if you're having any technical difficulties, please use the chat feature of the webinar so our support team can provide assistance. Also, you may submit questions throughout the webinar in the questions panel, on the side of your screen. We will have a question and answer session at the conclusion of the webinar. Also, at the end of the webinar, you'll receive a survey. Please complete the survey as your feedback is greatly appreciated. Now on to our webinar. We're very excited to have Denny Vetter with us today. Denny is founder and president of Arc Solutions, Inc. He has 25 years experience in welding, robotics, plasma automation systems repair and integration and new system sales. He graduated from Spartan School of Aeronautics and worked the first 12 years of his career for a major airline repairing aircraft navigational and communication systems. Then he also has a, his master's electrician license. Please join me in welcoming Denny Vetter. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, we're glad to have you and you're taking uh, time out of your busy day to have us here. Uh, standing next to me, is our sales uh, gentleman and also helped design the product that we're about to do the presentation on today and his name is Andy Taylor. Uh, Andy and I have worked together with a company called AIMCO out of Toledo, Ohio to help do the engineering along with Elco products or Wire Wizard, maybe better known in the industry for the wire delivery system to make this work with the OTC equipment and the swivel arc boom. Today's boom is going to be a demonstration on the aluminum. It's 15 foot. We've chose 15 foot because everyone knows that 4043 aluminum is the most difficult aluminum or product to deliver without bird nesting back in the system or the feeder. And with the OTC system, we're able to accomplish this with the aluminum. The system's also used for steel, uh, stainless, and flux core products. And we'll talk a little more about that towards the end of the presentation. We're going to start the presentation off and uh, we'll take some breaks in between for some questions and the cover items. And uh, with that, uh, we welcome everybody aboard and we hope you enjoy the presentation that we have with our swivel arc boom with the OTC well gear. With that, we'll start the presentation. Thank you. Welcome everyone to OTC's webinar. We, I'm Denny Vetter with the president of Arc Solutions out of Hicksville, Ohio. This is Andy Taylor of, in our sales department with Arc Solutions. We'd like to uh, thank OTC for this invitation to demonstrate the uh, Arc Solutions swivel arc welding boom um, and the, uh, how it benefits us when we're using OTC equipment. So this boom here is a 15 foot boom. We have it set up for 4043 aluminum wire. And as you can see, it has a standard big gun. We're eliminating all push pull. Arc Solutions started as a service company 19 years ago. We've grown into integration, automation, and, and full uh, distribution uh, as a welding distributor. But one of the things that we've always thought is 
the upfront cost of push pull systems, the maintenance of the weld gun, the push pull systems, and also the clutter on the floor work uh, of all the cables when you're using a, a push pull system. So over time, we developed this swivel arc. And what this allows us to do is have an articulating boom that welds aluminum, steel or stainless, with no problems bird nesting and not having the initial cost of what the push-pull system cost and uh, more importantly the uh, the cost to maintain it and keep it running plus we want to take a lot of the weight of, of the gun away from the operator um, we spent many years developing this and until we put the OTC equipment on here we were not successful uh, doing it with aluminum through this process we will show you why this system uh, works for, uh, for when you are welding aluminum. Um, as I mentioned, this is a 15 foot boom. We start with wire feed. In this particular case, we have a, a spool setup, but we can also do a drum setup. This is on a pallet platform, so you can pick it up with a fork truck, move it any place you would like. We can do just a pedestal mount. Uh, the standard pedestal is eight foot. We can do those at different lengths as the customer needs. Or we can do a little with the face and the pedestal and just do a power mount and have the boom out there. As I mentioned, this is a 15 foot. We do 12 foot and out to 20 foot with aluminum. On steel and stainless, we can do longer lengths. The system comes with air brakes so that it locks the axis in position. There's rubber pads on our air brakes, so it's designed that if somebody, a crane or a fork truck can hit this, it's still movable, but it's not very movable. It's very easy. And even on our, the only time we put the air brakes on anymore is uh, on our 15 foot and our 20 foot system. The 12 foot, we found that we don't need it. Those are typically tapered bearings of each primary arm, and we can set the torque to those. Um, and we don't have any issue with the boom wanting to drift on you. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a couple of different segments here. Uh, we're going to pause at this point, see if there's any questions. And then our next segment is we will show the operation of the boom. And then for our third and final segment, we're going to do a, uh, a weld test and show how it welds. Because with this OTC equipment, with this P400 power source, we can do aluminum, stainless, and mild steel. And if you're not familiar with the OTC equipment, the P400 is one of their machines that offers the DC wave pulse. What that does is it pulsates the wire feeder. And when we weld with this, you'll notice that the wire feeder will actually pulsate. So while we're mid welding, without manipulating the weld, we can make the weld look like a TIG weld and we've done it with the MIG, laid it down a lot quicker, and we have a very cosmetically appealing weld for the customers that need that cosmetic weld. So at this point, we'll take a short pause, get questions, and then we'll come back with the second. Brett, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Danny. Okay, so so we're back to the uh, previous stop here, a little pause in this. And as you can see on your screen, you have a list. You have a list of items to look at there that what we've done, um, or you can generate help generate questions from. Before we get further into the presentation, um, one of the biggest things that we found when we brought this into place is is that how much it's increased the productivity. One, by not having the cables on the floor. Second reason is, is that with arc starts and consumable life with the OTC equipment, um, they just don't change tips out uh, nearly as frequent as what they did in the past, nor do they have the down problems uh, associated with, uh, with not getting production out because the product itself is down or the cost of the repairs of the units. Um, so. It helps clean up the area some. 
Um, and then on the second list, I'm going to look here at my phone, guys. Um, the biggest thing, and we'll show this here in the next thing, is how we eliminate the bird nesting in this with aluminum. And um, it really just shows that if we can do it with aluminum, everything else is going to be a piece of cake for us. And that's what we proved out. Um, we was kind of curious how flux core wire would, would wear the system out, but we have uh, three booms out there right now. It's been running the 116 flux core for quite some time, and we've had uh, real good success with that too. So with that, we'll go to, well, is there any questions at this point? We're going to go ahead and populate the questions, Denny, and we'll, we'll, uh, I'll ask those at the end. So we'll give some okay. opportunity to ask some questions now and get them in there. And then at the end, we'll, we'll uh, revisit those. Okay. We'll get to our first that. poll question here now. Okay. Okay. So poll question number one, what is the biggest challenge to your metal fabrication operation? Skilled labor is difficult to attract and retain. Aluminum push pull torches are costly to maintain. Welding technology is constantly changing, hard to keep up. Welder fatigue due to weight of push pull torches. And it is hard to maintain quality while achieving output goals. We'll give everybody about 30 seconds to answer the poll. Okay, last call. All right, and uh, Denny, it looks like uh, at 41%, skilled labor is difficult to attract and retain was uh, the leader in the poll question. And it, that doesn't surprise us, Brent, because that's one of the things we hear back from the feedback of the systems we have out in the field is that especially with the OTC equipment, takes and we'll explain this double wave pulse if you're not familiar with the with the otc equipment but it takes some of the skill that's required from the operator out of the process and the equipment the otc equipment's doing that for you and um, it improves weld quality reduced spatter uh, better appearance in the welds less cleanup time less grinding disc you're purchasing and that's all being done through the software with the otc equipment so that answer um, it's pretty common for us that we hear back after the customers have the systems in their plant for six months or plus, and uh, and glad to see that, the, that that's the number one question out here that we have today. So with that, I think we're ready for the second second part of the segment. Very good. Welcome back everyone. In this segment, we kind of want to go through how the boom functions, what it does, and and demonstrate that it will not bird nest in your hand in, a, in the system that we have designed. And then plus our elevation of it. Um, but I'm going to start back at where the wire comes in. As we mentioned earlier, you can run this on a spool or you can run it on a drum. It runs up here through the wire wizard or elbow equipment through that wire guide module out through uh, the Elko conduit, and it's critical that the Elko conduit is on here, especially for steel. It comes in the back of the OTC feeder. The OTC feeder has a very well-designed four-wheel drive system for aluminum. It works flawlessly. Um, we can run this, as I mentioned earlier, also either off the 10-foot gun that we have now or the 13-foot gun. This is our belief and what we found with the systems we have out in the field is that we build the boom to the length that you need to reach and we prefer to use the 10 foot gun when we're doing aluminum. Um, we don't have any issues with the 13 foot gun. It's just that much less bulk the operator has to deal with. So the 13 foot gun works, works great on this. Uh, we haven't had this set up with a uh, water cooled system but OTC also makes an air-cooled 10 and 15 foot gun if you're welding much thinner aluminum. In this particular setup, we're running uh, with the P400. We are running uh, 047 wire. Uh, we can either run 047 wire or 116th, but for today's demo, 
for the feedability, we're running 047. That 047 wire with the software technology inside the OTC, OTC machine will allow us to weld down to around that 50 to 60 thousandths in thinness of material, um, all the way up to we got three quarter inch material here that we're going to weld. If we were going to weld three quarter inch material on a regular basis, we would definitely switch over to the 116 weld wire. Uh, the gun is robust. It's a 400 amp water cooled gun. We have had zero issues with these guns that are out in the field. Uh, greatly reduce your repair costs of your current push pull system. So the wire comes up through a wire guide module in the post, through that wire guide module out here to the feeder. Um, we don't care where you weld with this at. This can be bent in any position. We currently got folded all the way over to demo the wire feed test. But before we do the wire feed test, inside the, uh, the wire feeder, we have a flow switch. So if you would happen to turn on the power source and don't have the water cooler turned on, this will not weld, it'll air out. The power source itself will air out with an E500 air code, saying you have no water flow. So we're gonna demonstrate that. Andy's gonna turn on the power source. You may not be able to see it here, but the, it says hello as it comes up. It instantly airs out E500. I pull the trigger, I get no wire feed. So Andy's gonna plug the water cooler in. Our flow switch connection is made up here. The power source comes up as it should. I pull the trigger, I have gas flow, and I'm in inch mode right now, so it's just inching out slow. But as you can see, the wire inches. So from here, we're gonna to go to the wire feed test, what this does. See how the conduit's bent around. You see how we get the boom pushed back. Andy's going to inch out wire here, and the wire is going to burden us right into my hand. No bird nesting at the feeder. No bird nesting back at our feed assist system. And we're bringing this wire out 25 feet on a regular MIG weld gun. Okay, Andy, you can stop. And that's 4043 weld wire 047. We can even loop this through here and put that loop in and still do the feed test. It bird nest in my hand and not in that system. It took us years to figure this out and develop this so that we had flawless feed problem. We know from all our years of service and selling equipment but the number one issue when welding aluminum is arc starts and uh, consumption of consumables. Whether that's the cables inside the gun, whether it's the gun overheating itself and, and being uh, frequently, frequently being rebuilt, um, it's that cost we try to eliminate, and this system does that for us. So. Okay, thanks, Amy. So the next thing we're going to do is run through the range of motion with this. We're going to just lock the air brakes that are on this. You do have to walk to get enough angle on it when you want to bend it over sideways. Lock this into any position you would like. We're going to bring this out here just so that we're centered up with the camera. This concludes this segment. We'll answer any questions that you might have at this point. And then our final and third segment, we're going to weld with it and show you the capabilities of the OTC P400. And especially, the, the it, it just really, it shines well in steel. But when it comes to aluminum or stainless, I haven't found a machine out there in my 25 years of being in this business that can weld like this machine. So with that, we'll go to the next. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Brent, I believe you have another survey to present to us. Yes, and Rick, yep. And just in 
for everybody out there, please make sure you're submitting your questions uh, throughout this so we can get to those at the end. All right, survey question number two. What is the biggest challenge with your large area fabrication? Reliable wire feeding over long distances. Clutter makes it difficult to navigate the area. Wire feeders are difficult to reposition and service. Difficult staging inbound components and outbound assemblies. Initial cost and high service expense of push-pull torches. We'll give everybody about 30 seconds to answer. Okay, last call. Okay, Denny, it looks like uh, reliable wire feeding over long distances uh, is leading the uh, the answers at 42%. It makes sense, right? That's always Absolutely. the number one problem with welding aluminum. Trailer manufacturers, pole manufacturers, truck bed manufacturers, you got long distances that you need to get the, the wire, weld wire out to with having all your equipment on the back side so with aluminum number one issue um, and with push pull systems you are greatly limited to the amperage that you can weld with you can weld with the hotter amperages it just creates more cons more consumption of the consumables and uh more repairs to the to the gun um one thing i'll add to that everyone at our company started on our service side of our company um, other than our front office personnel. And everything that Andy and I did with this is from a repair, or if I was gonna have to weld with it, how would I do it? How would I set it up in our shop? Um, we fought for years trying to figure out how we could do this with aluminum because we thought we could revolutionize the industry. We found a way to push pull aluminum. Um, we was able to do that with the feed system but we still had arc start issues. We had other common problems that go with trying to feed aluminum wire over long distances. Until we put the OTC equipment on there and had, it was able to use incorporate their software that's incorporated into the weld parameters of the machine, we still couldn't solve the arc start issues and the high consumable life. Yeah, we could stop the gun repairs, uh, that type of stuff, and get away from the push-pull guns, but we couldn't get the longer consumable life um, at the end of the day, we want our operators welding, right? We don't want them changing a gun or we don't want them to have to reroute the wire all the way through the push-pull system. If you got a 50-foot push-pull system, they bird nest it back at the wire, uh, at the feeder itself, that's 50 foot away. You got all that downtime, not to mention the waste of the weld wire, the waste of the, uh, of the operator's time to try to get productive, productivity out for your plant. So that's how we looked at this when we were designing it. And this is our fifth year uh, with this unit. We designed it for about a year and a half to two years with just beta type going out to customers that we had that we knew. We just put them in there and worked through any bugs that we had uh, to get it to this point here so that when it's set on your floor, you can weld, your operator can go. And with this OTC equipment, especially welding aluminum, it's true for steel. We got metal core customers uh, using this with OTC equipment. Um, your arc start capabilities and your consumable consumption in every case that we've installed these has went down. So with that, um, do we have a presentation of a, of a slide right now, uh, Brent? No, we're gonna get right into segment number three, Danny. Okay, segment number three is coming up, thank you. Yep. For this segment, we're going to demonstrate the welding capabilities of the OTC machine. Uh, we're welding about 60,000, 70,000 material with 047 wire, and then the second demonstration will be on half inch material. On the uh, previous segment, one of the things I forgot to mention was that in when we designed this, we designed it so that the operator could pull this with the gun and not cause any damage to the to the uh, inlet side of the gun up there at the feeder or break anything off inside the feeder. So it's designed to grab it by the gun and pull the unit around where you need it to be. 
and it'll hold up to that environment and you can take that abuse. So again, yeah, we've had these out in the field now for three years. We so far haven't had any failures with that in any, in any manner. And then again, he's going to demonstrate uh, welding the film material first. And just a, a clarification, we're not production welders. We're not guys that weld every day. We know how to weld. So we're not given the full demonstration of the capabilities of the machine because of our hand movements. Uh, even though he's going to move in a straight line, it's just because we're not professional welders. But we still know what we're doing when we lay down the weld. So here's the first demo with the thin material. thin gauge aluminum. manipulating the weld at all. It's the software that laid that in there like dimes. We really designed this system for trailer manufacturers, uh, companies that are welding pipe, or any place that has bay areas where they lift and pull parts out or they have to move the welder. Uh, or they have long push-pull systems that they have to, uh, you know, have all the guns and cables laying on the floor. So um, we're definitely going to stop here, take on some more questions if there's any from anyone, and then we'll do our final segment with uh, a trailer backed in here and showing how we work around that trailer with this boom system. So appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we are going to weld one more unit. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is show you how cool the OTC gun stays after welding this half inch material. Granted, it's not long welds, but I still can go up there and grab right onto the gooseneck right after Andy's done welding with it. So the cooling system does an awesome job of keeping that torch cool, which obviously really helps with our consumable life. Right onto the gooseneck. 
I can come down to here and hold it and not let go and be too hot. Up here it's definitely too hot yet, but here on the gooseneck, it's is room temperature. So we can't say enough good things about how the OTC gun operates. Uh, the complete OTC system, when we're welding with it, um, it just lays down a, a, a superior weld and allows you to do a lot of things that uh, we previously have not been able to do with, with other systems. So, thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Yeah, a lot of good information there, Denny. Brent. So Denny's getting back on online here. You know, some of the advantages, uh, obviously, as we saw in that segment, is the clean welds, um, the, the wave pulse, uh, the aesthetics of the wave pulse, as Denny mentioned, that stacked dime effect. Uh, if you're looking for those type of aesthetics, uh, definitely a very good system. I think we'll get on to poll question number three. What is the biggest advantage you see with a swivel arc system? Reduces clutter in the workspace, overhead mounting for easy repositioning and service, replaces push-pull with low-cost and reliable push-only torches, eliminates wire feed issues and bird nesting, reduces welder fatigue through weight reduction of the torch. And we'll give everybody about 30 seconds. Okay, last call. Okay, so we've got a couple up at the top, Denny, one at 39% and one at 28%. Uh, reduces clutter within the workspace and overhead mounting for easy repositioning and service. Seem to lead the pack on this one. Okay, thanks, Brent. Um, and again, that's what we would expect. I mean, it's obvious to see from the video, you reduce all your floor cutter or clutter. It's uh, the safety aspect for the operators and, and with your plant. And just that they don't have any fatigue or the fatigue is much less because the weight of that gun is so much less. Plus they can get into tighter joints to weld with that gun um, also. So all that kind of goes together to eliminate the clutter, whether it's the clutter through the welding process or the clutter that we have on the floor. And then the overhead mounting, um, yeah, uh, we've had real good success. The majority of them we've had out in the field are pedestal mount, but we do have column mounts out there. And we have a few of them that went with the uh, base platform so that they can move it in different areas of the plant. On that base platform while we're on that, it has self or it has leveling pads that you level the system out. But those tapered bearings in the primary and the secondary arm, you can set your, your torque whatever you need in there to keep that from drifting uh, as long as everything's level and and uh, not make it too hard for the operator to pull now that's not true so much with we got very level but 15 and 20 foot booms we still like those air brakes out there uh, we'll sell them without but you may take the chance of some drifting or you got some torque tighten up that it's more difficult for the operator to, to pull but on the 12 uh, foot systems uh, we've eliminated the air brakes off of them completely. Uh, we, we found the bearings work great. So with that, we'll go into the final segment of uh, showing the boom. And we're just reaching around a 30-foot trailer with this 15-foot system and see every place that you can get to with it. With that, we'll go to the next final segment. All right.
Looks like we may be running into some. For the last, for the last segment here, we're going to show the reach. We backed in a trailer that we have here. This is a 24 foot deck trailer and, and out to the gooseneck we're at 33 and a half foot. Again, this is a 15 foot boom with a 10 foot gun. If we needed another three foot of reach, we could put the OTC 13 foot gun on here and not affect the operation of this boom. So I'm gonna walk this around and show you uh, the capabilities of the boom and the reach that it has in any of your work areas. So you come down here, you got plenty of reach here, go up and meet underneath. You can also lower the boom if you need more reach down. Right, got all the reach through here. Come out here and clear the front, clear the front of the boom uh, or the trailer, and I can weld anything that's out here on this trailer. I weld on the other side. If I want to, I can just jump up here. Come around, pull it, and I can weld and get my reach anywhere I want on this side. For me, for my comfort, I wouldn't have to do this, but if I'm going to go down along this side as well, I'm going to swing this so this is out of the way, and I'm working it down this way coming down through here. I can lock it in position and I got all this reach here I can weld without anything moving on it. So it shows the complete reach of the boom on the trailer and uh, this is our final presentation with this. We want to thank OTC for the opportunity to, to show their equipment off with our swivel arc boom and we'll find, uh, finish up with any questions that you may have. Thank you and I appreciate your time that you've taken today to view this webinar. Have a good day. All right, very good information. We're on to our uh, question and answer section. Denny, thank you very much for a great presentation today. Um, definitely a lot to consider. So on to our questions. Question number one is, can you can you show raising up and down for changing wire and drive rolls? My, my company fabricates heavy structural steel with a lot of overhead crane activity. Sure. Do you see an issue with, with uh, showing that right now? No, there's no issue at all with that right now. So it's in the mid position now. There's two dual air cylinders up here. Go ahead and lower it. So that's the lower position. Remember that on the base assembly we have down here, that's about eight inches. So if you're just going with the pedestal, this is gonna be eight inches lower, gonna be right in here. I stand 5'11", um, but I still can get in here, change my, change my drive rolls, bring this a little better so you can see it. So I still can get in here, change my drive rolls out, feed my wire through. Um, we do, require 120 volt supply to the, uh, and we run, we're gonna show you how high it goes up to. It'll go straight out. We don't care what position you weld with it in. You can weld with it down, you can stop at mid range, you can weld with it there, or you can weld with it all the way up. But we do require 120 volt air supply. We run about five PSI on our uh, feed assist back at the, where the wire goes into the boom. And then uh, this system here, we have adjustable valves uh, that you can operate to determine or set how fast or how quick you want that to lower out here in the secondary. Um, that's pretty much where we set most of them, right where you see this one here, here at. So that's the reason we had it so it could lower so that the operator could do that. You're not getting up there. In the emergency situation where say you're running drum wire back here, you have an emergency situation with most feeders, and in particular with the OTC here, as you see, you could you could throw a spool of wire on up there and run it from, the, from that point to get by until you got your wire drum issues resolved or taken care of. So even, even if for some reason you would have a fault with wire uh, or a fault with the boom, um, you still can weld with the boom. We would just have to put a spool out here. Um, so far we've had zero um, 
warranty issues with the booms that we have out there. We got about 25 of them out in the field. And the longest ones have been from our beta test with the, they still have those. Those have been out there four years. Fantastic. I kind of ran into the another question with that first one. So uh, if so, this company has uh, they do a lot of fabricating of structural steel and they have a lot of overhead crane activity um, with the air brakes engaged. Denny, um, if the boom was to get uh, hit by an overhead crane, uh, how does that uh, react? Well, um, if it's a lateral hit like I'm going to do, if you could lower it a little bit, Andy. So right now, that's good. So the brakes are off. I can move it anywhere I want with the gun, or how I want to pull it. So with the brake set, there's two rubber pads. There's, there's, a, there's a brake right here on the secondary arm, and there's a brake back here on the primary arm. I'm going to swing this so you can see the brakes, or hopefully get it. So can you see the brake there, gentlemen? So that's the brake going up and down. There's a rubber pad on that. So in the event that this would get hit with a crane or a fork truck in here loading, I can still pull this because it's just on those rubber pads. So that's what we wanted. We wanted the, the braking system not to be hard locking pins. So if it did get hit, we, weren't, we were going to at least minimize, minimize the damage that's done to the boom itself. Um, hopefully that answers your question on that. It sure does. All right, I got a couple more for you, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what kind of warranty issues are you having? We have not had any. You want to speak to that at all as far as any? And we've had a couple things we changed design on with our beta back here at the feed. Uh, we find that the customers, the majority of our customers are running 5356 aluminum. So it's not quite as soft as, you know, as the 4043. It doesn't require or doesn't create quite as much wear issues as the 4043 wire would, but the customers that we have run aluminum, the only maintenance that we're really doing to the boom is every six months, we replace that green liner that goes from that wire guide module to the feeder. Eventually, that polyurethane wears a groove down in it uh, with the wire rubbing across it and you have to change that out. We find that that's about six months and about a year if you're doing steel. Um, flux core kind of falls in the same category as when you're doing aluminum. Um, the other item that we replace is the short little, the short little piece right here. Uh, sometimes we get wear on the curve of that. The feed assist motor that we have back there is air driven and, we, and we're only operating that off five to seven PSI. What that does is it takes off all the back pressure or the drag as you're pulling the wire through the boom. It takes off all that, that drag motion. It, got, it has a little bit of push to it, so it's not dragging in our conduit. Um, we think that, that we would never order one without that feed assist, whether we're doing steel or whether we're not. We have had some customers doing steel that didn't want the feed assist motor to, to cut some cost out of it. Um, that's roughly a, a couple of grand option. Um, but we think that in the long haul, it pays for itself. And on aluminum, we won't sell it without it. I think flux core is the same way because it saves the life of your, of your uh, conduit through there. The wire guide modules, uh, we have had no issues with those. We haven't replaced one of those yet. We had one that got hit by a crane and they broke it off. We replaced that one, but otherwise we haven't had zero warranty issues with any of the Elko equipment on here. Elko or the Aimco parts that are on this boom. Fantastic. Yeah, and I can speak on the OTC equipment. As far as warranty goes, you get three years parts and labor. And in the first year, it's a one year replacement. So um, definitely uh, very reliable equipment. Yeah, okay, thanks, uh, next, next question is, uh, uh, let's see here. So what, What's the total cost of one of these units ready to plug and play? On the aluminum, without the base system, the base is kind of ex it is expensive because it has it requires a lot of weight to it so that nothing can tip over. We've got it designed so that I can literally hang out here with that base. Nothing's bolted to the floor. I weigh 210 pounds, and I can hang out here, and nothing tips. 
So that, that base is expensive. So if you, if you remove the base out of it, like most plants do, um, we're at right around $24,000 installed. That's with all the OTC equipment. That's with the uh, brake system. Um, uh, it's everything as you see set up here, minus the base that's on there. Steel, um, we're probably, we're down to that uh, $21,000 range with all the equipment. Okay. Install it, set it in place. Okay. And then last one. Can the system be modified to use power sources and wire feeders other than OTC? Yes and no. The reason I say no, we will not sell this boom package if you're welding aluminum without the OTC weld gear. We did a, a, a lot of testing and, and lots, of, lots of sweat went into this. Um, we just will not sell it without the OTC equipment um, or aluminum. For steel, we do put other manufacturers equipment on there and have, and we have them out in the field running with other manufacturers equipment. Okay, fantastic. I guess one of the last ones I, that I have is how do we, uh, how do we start the process at looking at one? Uh, you can either reach out to anyone that's a part of this webinar, um, Arc Solutions. Uh, we have our website that's on there. We have videos on our website demoing us. One of them is a video testimony with a customer that started out. Uh, I'll tell you about that customer a little bit. They were adamant that they did not want the boom. We tried to bring it in there free of charge um, to set it up, and they did not want it in there. They, they didn't think it would work. We still kept having pro problems with their push pull systems and the, and the maintenance cost on them. And they were welding thick aluminum, three eighths to half inch plate all day long. And uh, finally, we got the boom in there. Currently, they have 11 booms in there and they got another 20, roughly 23 uh, more booms coming in on order with us. Um, they have now switched over all their steel facility uh, applications. They were a completely different welding uh, brand before. They have switched everything over to OTC when we're all said and done in there. Um, they currently have about 80 units they purchased and when we're all said and done there's gonna be about 130 units. And I think it, and when, we, when we're finally done in there, we're gonna be somewhere around 60, 70 booms in their facility. Fantastic. Well, Denny and Andy, thank you uh, today for your presentation. Definitely a lot to consider when improving your welding capability and efficiency in your large working uh, area. <clears throat> and we so that'll do it for thank, today. Unless okay, you have anything you'd you. like to add, Denny. Yeah, I just we want to thank OTC for this opportunity. Uh, we also want to thank AIMCO out of Toledo, Ohio, who built material handling booms. We went to them and said, hey, has anybody done anything with a uh, with welding boom? Uh, we made some changes uh, working with them. They've been a flawless partner, uh, along with OTC being a flawless partner along this uh, process for us. And the same thing with Elko out of Jackson, Michigan. Uh, can't say they got the best wire delivery product out there on the market, hands down. With that, we thank you. Well, that concludes today's webinar. Please make sure to uh, answer the survey at the end of this, uh, your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thanks again. Great job, guys. Awesome. Are we clear?